What do we see there? God starts speaking to Abraham, telling him, I am going to bless you. What for? So that you can be a blessing. There is a strength. What is the purpose of God blessing you? It is so that you can become a blessing for others. And once you interpret these verses correctly, my friend, you will come to understand. If the blessing I receive is not even sufficient for me to meet the needs of my family, of myself individually, how can I then become a blessing for other people? How can I fulfill the purpose of God? How can I ever do that? It would be an impossible thing, right? So once we understand the word correctly, we will come to see the essence of God's blessing would actually be the ability to give once and then to give again. How many of you understand this? Mm -hmm. To keep the cycle going. What would happen if we gave once and found that it is a loss for us? We would, ne we would never become a blessing for another person, right? But when we give, when we obey God's word, you know what God does? He fulfills His promise that says, Give and it shall be given unto you. We cast the principle, we give again. That is how we become a blessing, right? So we need to understand the will of God for our life is not all struggle. There might be seasons of struggle, but the will of God for our life is not struggle all through life. When we start struggling, when we end up in pain, when we end up in failure, those are moments that we need to do something about. We need to do things that will change the situation, shift the season. For that to happen, I need you to understand, the thing you need to do is to stop tolerating your problem. You need to stop tolerating your problem. It's like having a child. When the newborn has just arrived, what do parents do? It's all Gucci crew and expressions of love and gifting and wipings and kisses, right? What happens if a newborn baby is in your hand and starts peeing on your chest? You say, it's okay baby, don't worry. It changes the diapers. You help it to get into the next situation, right? You don't, you know, just let it fall to the ground because it peed on your chest or something like that, no? But what would your reaction be if the same child actually gets to its second birth way, does the same thing to you. Would you still tolerate that? No. You would give it a beating and great advice that it needs to go to the bathroom, right? Why do you do this? Because as parents you understand whatever you tolerate, you allow to exist. And you also understand whatever you are willing to tolerate, that you will never be able to change, right? So when you need change, you stop tolerating it and press for change. Why do you press for change? What is the motivation? Because you desire change. So without the desire, without desire, without deciding that you are not going to tolerate it, you are not going to adjust with this, Without pressing for change, I want to assure you, even God will not be able to help you. So if you want to make a new beginning in your life, despise your problem. Do not have this with it. Press for change. Very important. Here's the third thing I want to share with you. Here's the third thing. Many people, when I start talking to them about you know, changing, about beginning afresh, they come and ask me one important question. When should I start, Pastor? When should I start? And when I hear this question, 
I'm reminded of a Bible verse. Remember what happened in the life of the children of Israel? See, God interfered. God intervened on their behalf and started plaguing Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. And when those plagues came, one of the plagues was, you know, frogs all over Egypt. The river was full of them, the streets were full of them, houses were full of them. They took a pot, you know, you wanted to put it on the stove and make some tea. You don't find tea there, you find frogs inside. Everything was filled with frogs. Pharaoh said he wanted that approach. And Moses came to him and said, Pharaoh, I'm going to surely pray so that God will send these frogs uh, you know, back in their environment. You know, put them back in the river. But I'm going to give you an order. Choose, then I should pray for you. You know what Pharaoh's reply was? He said, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Pray for me tomorrow. And when I read that verse, I often ask myself, why not today, dear? Really? Why not today? Why do you want to suffer the frogs one more day, one more night? Why not today? But that is the way people are. And I see many a pharaoh inside church. Not because of what they do to their fellow beings, but because of the way they deal with trouble. They've always got this, you know, nale nale, nile nile attitude. The tomorrow is no. Then should we start exercising tomorrow? Such a load of clothes to wash. When am I going to do this tomorrow? Get all of my children's uniforms, you know, ironed. When? Tomorrow. Children say, I've got my exams coming. I need to really start studying. Then? Tomorrow. That's the way people are. That's the way people are. But my friend, I want to tell you something. If you are a person who's got this tomorrow syndrome, then you. You need to understand you know, a few principles here. First principle is, yesterday is in the tomb. Tomorrow is in the womb. All we have is today. All we have is today. It is gone. And we do not know what tomorrow holds or even whether there is going to be a tomorrow. All we have is today. This is the first principle you need to understand. And the second thing, my friend, that we need to remember is today's suffering is actually a result of what we did yesterday. And going by the same principle you need to understand, tomorrow's blessing will be a result of what we do today. So what do you need to do? Touch your neighbor now and say, today matters. Today matters. The secret of a blessed life is hidden in your daily agenda. What do you do today? What do you do today matters. Whatever your choices are, whatever your actions are, it is going to have a consequence tomorrow. And understanding that, you should control, hallelujah, direct your actions today. Start now. The best time to start making changes is now. N O W. I cannot put it more simply to you. Here's one more principle I want to share with you. I gave you three now. One, never disregard pain and failure. Number two, to despise your problems. Don't adjust with it. Number three, the best time to start making changes is now, today. Fourth thing. Fourth thing. You need to understand your maker, the creator of heaven and earth. When he designed you and your life, he designed your life in a manner whereby everything you are called to do, you cannot get it done alone. You need the help of people. How many of you understand this? 
You cannot get it done alone. Don't do something with that. You need to understand, you need the help of people. You're called to be in fellowship with people. You're called to work with people. It's not good for man to be alone. That is not pastor's opinion. It was God's opinion in the first place. The call to work. Many when they hear me saying things like this, ask me, why did God make me this way, pastor? Why did God not give me the ability to do everything myself? Because if He allowed you to, there will come a point in life when you look in the mirror, see your own reflection and call yourself, Oh wonderful and marvelous one, you with you, nothing is ever impossible. You would consider yourself to become God. 